I don't think it was my implants that made me successful. And it was my personality, being kind on set. People want to work with you. It was my face. Um, you know, I don't really, at the time, I thought it was my implants. And the implants, they gave me confidence in my body that was not real confidence. Hello, hello, Heel Squad. Welcome back. Glad to be with you today. It's gonna be a great day because we're gonna make it a great day, right, honey? I'd like to think so. You know we're in control of our day. You know we can make it great. I did not know that. Yes, we can. We can set our intentions and then we can choose behaviors that will correlate with those intentions. Okay. All right, I'm in. How do I'm I? In. I'm in. How do I do it? Just say it's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a feel great it. day. I feel it. <laughs> it's gonna be a great day, guys. We're excited to be back with you today. Uh, not our normal chat show because we have a friend that's joining us. I'll tell you all about her in just a minute. But first, let me kill the mosquito. Ah, I got him! I killed him! Oh my god, I'm so excited. I've been trying that to kill mosquito. this guy for days. He's dead. That mosquito had a family. Now, I'll tell you, friends, I don't kill bugs. Mm -hmm. I don't kill anything. I do the catch and release program. Except now, that one. Why? The mosquitoes are a different story. Why? Because they carry Why diseases that, that will hurt me. So you're and really targeting a group of insects. I am. And I think I just wow. maimed him. So maybe later, because he just hit him on the couch, mm -hmm. um, maybe later I can resurrect him and put him outside Natasha, to go bite someone else. Natasha, make a, nerd, a note to uh, alert the insect community <laughs> about this. Um, so friends... <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm going to say that's not even a microtransgression. That's a macro transgression against the mosquito I community. I don't like killing because well, it's not my place. Sure. Mm -hmm. After but the fact. Mosquitoes are the only things that I really, really have zero tolerance for. Uh, friends, we are so excited to be with you today and in a, in a much better way. I don't want to kill people or animals or insects, but the mosquitoes got to go. Anyway, um, let's start with other quote our... I can't even talk now. So we'll edit that last part out and we'll come back. Let's start with our quote of the day. Love yourself first and everything else falls in line. You really have to love yourself to get anything done in this world. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? That's from Lucille Ball, my idol. No, she's amazing. And the quote's amazing. You're just making me laugh. Honey, <laughs> why are you laughing at me? Because I got so excited. I've been trying to kill him for oh, days in God. here. You're a character. I'm a character. <laughs> um, friends, before we get into our chat today, we're going to talk all about uh, ageism, breast implants. We're going to talk about modeling and all kinds of things with our guest. But first, you know, we have to keep the lights on. So thank you all for helping us and supporting this show in the various ways that you do. We only bring in uh, partners that we believe in and love, or excuse me, I believe in and love. Macy's happens to be one of them. And I have all my curated picks on our link, macy's.com forward slash heel squad. If you need some new fall fashion ideas or um, anything for the home, by the way, they have free stylists that you could totally take advantage of that I think is just an amazing feature. So fashion is not yeah, easy. Yeah, wait, how does that work? So you go to um, Macy's.com, right, Natasha? And they have, I can't hear you. Macy's.com forward slash personal stylist. Thank you. That's where you go. Macy's.com forward slash personal stylist. And they will set you up with a stylist and help you. So I've had the benefit of having a stylist for over 20 years. And what that does is you accrue hours towards that expertise. So now I'm very confident with putting my own fashion together, but it's not an easy thing to do mm -hmm. if you haven't had that luxury, obviously. So if you want some new fall looks and you want some help with that so you can go into the office feeling good or your workplace, most of our workplace is at home, so you don't have to impress anyone anymore. So if you want to look great when you go out to drinks with friends or dinner with your new, you know, potential lover. Mm -hmm. um, fellow mosquito killer. Fellow mosquito killer. You can go to Macy's.com forward slash personal stylist and they will help you. They also have a new brand called On 34th that I'm loving. 
Um, I have this really cute denim romper that I have from them and a few other pieces. So Macy's.com forward slash heel squad friends. And for you know that. what 34th is a salute to? Miracle on 34th Street. Well, on 34th Street is where is the Mace, the famous, world famous Macy's is. Oh, thanks, honey. And I forgot about that. Holiday season upcoming. I'm saying it's nice to take a nice field trip there, as we did, and the multi multi levels. And it's been renovated, but they keep a lot of the stuff, the original stuff that you saw back in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. Very cool experience. Yeah, so cool. So. Uh, also, friends, just thrive. Natasha and I were talking about it this morning because she has been on the probiotics as well. I feel like you did the same thing that I did. I was only doing it after one meal. And I think our digestive systems need a lot more assistance as we're older. So now Natasha is going to start doing it after every meal because I'll tell you, it's made a huge difference in my life and all of my organs that were throbbing out of my body um are no longer throbbing out of my body <laughs> everything was like we can't do this uh so just thrivehealth.com if you use the promo code at the checkout heal squad i think you have to capitalize the h but at least heal squad has to be all one word um i do know that you can get uh isn't it 20 percent off net yeah 20 percent off so go try that i know you did the just calm and you really liked that tell us a little bit about that now yeah, so I um, I know Tina mentioned in the episode uh, in the episode that uh, she she said that you might have some kind of die off of the unhealthy bacteria that are in your gut, and I definitely had that. I had some effects. I had a massive headache after a couple of days of taking it, and I I just did not. I felt like my head was going to explode. Um, but then the next day I woke up and I felt great. Um, and I want to say it was about two or three days after that I woke up and I felt like I had just taken a deep breath. Ooh. Like I, like just that there was like a calmness, literally, like that I hadn't felt before or hadn't felt in a really long time. Um, and that's kind of, and I, and I attribute that to the just calm. Yeah, your vagus nerve is happy. Yeah. That's what the just calm does. Honey, you don't need calming of your vagus nerve. You're just calm in general. Cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. But us, us over here, we need it. And it's been helpful. I'll tell you, I gave it to someone who was really, really deep in the depths of I don't want to live anymore and he's feeling tremendously okay, better okay so I'm really really grateful for just thrive so just thrive health.com use the promo code heal squad um, and you will get to um, experience the joys of having a digestive system that's happy uh, and Rosetta Stone Rosetta Stone.com if you use the promo code heal squad <clears throat> excuse me you can get also What's the percentage off, Natasha? I'm so bad. It's 20%. Okay, great. 20% uh, off, learn a new language, improve a language like I am. I'm improving my Greek because I realized it's a little elementary. Even though I'm fluent, it's a little elementary. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I'm going to get to the bottom of why I can't speak in my own studio. I think it just needs to be cleaned. So we'll work on that today. Anyhow, um... Joining us in our little chat today um, is Joy Corrigan. She is a renowned model, an actress, philanthropist, animal rights advocate. She's been in so many shows, whether it's Victoria's Secret, GQ, Jimmy Choo, um, and she has lived all over the globe, South Africa, and so many other places and has really had an interesting journey. So for any of the Heel Squad who um, has daughters that want to model, um, she has been there, done that. She's also been through the removal of her breast implants. We're going to get to kind of that whole thing, which has been interesting for me because I've been hearing so much about how bad breast implants are. And you know, it's, it's scary because everyone's still doing them or implanting them. And I don't know exactly what it is that's bad, but I know Natasha has some research and I know you've actually gone through it. So you probably know so much joy. Um, Kev, I know you probably have heard me talking about this recently. I was like, I really want to know more about this I and mean, spread this awareness. Yeah. I also just want to say, I, 
don't personally don't want to judge anybody that decides to do any kind of procedure, you know. I want to just put that out there. Oh, wonderful, honey. I'm so grateful for your disclaimer. Thank you. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I just, I don't know. I had a dad who was very, <laughs> listen, my dad was very blue collar. He'd be the last one ever thinking. I just never forget when he, we, he would tell me about cosmetic surgery. This is like 40 years ago. And he's like, if it makes a person feel better, then yeah. I'm all for it. He's oh, I'm like, you know, life's really hard, Kev. And this is like, a, like I said, he was a construction laborer, <laughs> but it was, you know, and you know, he had, he was bald and he didn't, he had scars all over his face from boxing. He didn't care, but he just mm-hmm. that for other people. And I don't know. I always just took that with me. So, but no, that, I agree. Sense, it's nice to be educated about all of it. I agree with that. But as someone who's 45 and they're starting to sag, I was like, oh, would I ever do this? I'm too scared. I've already had enough surgeries for health situations. I'm too scared and I'm too shy to have a doctor playing with my boobies under the knife to fix them. So, and you have to like flash them your boobs so that they can see what they're fixing. And all of that is just not going to happen. But I am intrigued (laughs) by it all. And then, you know, the second I start getting intrigued, I hear it's really bad for you. But we also hear broccoli is bad for you. So Joy, you can tell us a little bit about what led you to, you know, first of all, we should talk a little bit about your modeling career and what made you want to get them, but then also what made you want to remove them? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, first of of all. Um, So I started modeling when I was real young. I dropped out of college and it was my dream to be a model actress. So I moved to Miami and I was like, I'm going to be a model. And I and I tried to go to every agency, like sign me. And, you know, I got a lot of rejection because they were like, oh, you're too short. You're too blonde. You're too this and that. How tall are you? Um, I'm 5'8", which oh, is like. We're short for that. Yeah. yeah it's short for modeling. Yeah. But <laughs> well, that's, I mean, listen, I wanted a model growing up too. And I was always too short. My mom would say. Maria, hang from the monkey bars. So I would hang from the monkey bars, guys. No way. So desperate. So that elite modeling agency would take me or whoever it was. Yeah, I would always wear the highest heels as possible. Completely ruined my feet over the years. But um, now I'm trying to wear more flats Mm -hmm. (laughs) and embrace my height. But yeah, so I got a lot of rejection. And so I went around and I kept doing photo shoots with different photographers and they would tell me things like, oh, you know, you if you got implants or if you got a little bit of this or if you colored your hair dark, you would work, you would get signed, all these different voices in my head. So, you know, I, I had that in the back of my mind. I ended up signing with an agency and I was so excited. I was like, you know what, I'm going to go get implants because then I'll work. I'll get all these swimsuit jobs. And so I didn't think about you know when I was going to have to get them out, how, what are the side effects? I didn't care. I was 23 yeah. and I was like, you know what? I'm going to just do it. And so I went under the knife. I changed the way I looked to, you know, so-called work or be mm-hmm. accepted. And <clears throat> yeah, that's why I did it. Well, and I just remember in my day, there were... There, it was so much harder than your day to be accepted. Like now you're seeing every shape, every size, every height. I'm actually surprised. Well, actually. Most well, was years ago. This was 12 years ago. Yeah, you're right. 12 years ago. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it has only been in the last, what, five years, 10 years? And, and the, and Not even. I would say like the last, yeah, five years. Yeah. If that. And Joy, it's, it, and, and <clears throat> the other part is you did become successful at this. Yeah. Um, so you followed like their advice and you, so this is what probably made it different. Right. I had a, I, I still have a very successful career and it took a lot of hard work. It wasn't easy. Um, it took years of really dedicating my entire life to it, but I don't think it was my implants that made me successful. And it was my personality being kind on set. People want to work with you. It was my face. Um, You know, I don't really, at the time, I thought it was my implants. And the implants, they gave me confidence in my body that was not real confidence, you know, because it's not real, real, my real body. So I'm, I feel that that successful career was not because of the implants. I see that now. 
But mm. at the time, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's because of my body that I'm working. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, I guess I, you know, I feel like the new body movement has been for a while, but it really hasn't. Yeah. So you were still kind of stuck in that, that n you're not right where now anybody is right. Yeah. I would, right? I would like, get measured by my agents, you know, all the time on a monthly basis. They wanted to make sure I fit the comp card measurements and I had the perfect measurements now that I had my implants. Did I was, they weigh you too? They did not weigh weigh me because um, if as long as I met the measurements, that's what the clients look for. The, so it's kind of crazy. They would make the clothes for these measurements and you had to fit them. It was that that's how it was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would constantly be dieting, working out and like extreme things that weren't healthy now that I look back at it. So and you lived all over the world, right? Yeah, I did. Where I got live? I got to live um so first I started in Miami, then I moved to Milan. That was my first market. Then I traveled to Australia, I traveled to South Africa, I lived in Germany, traveled all over Europe, where else then I went moved back to LA and then New York and now I'm back in LA. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And and so this was your dream. You did what you had to do at the time to pursue your dream and to feel like you could actually make it happen. What changed? So I think that I, I'm i here because I want to talk about how you don't have to do that to make your dreams come true. And I think or I hope that is not what you have to do. And I'm trying to make that change where, you know, if you love your body and you are confident in your own skin, then that's where the success comes and that radiate like radiates basically when you go to the castings when you go to auditions and that's kind of what i think that's working for me now right mm -hmm. and my body the way that it is and um i'm hoping to that works for other people who and just warning i guess young woman or anybody who's thinking hey i'm gonna go alter my body so that I can get work. And I'm here to say that's not, hopefully that's not the case. And let's change that. Yeah. You have like al almost a million followers on Instagram. Do you know who your followers are? So my followers are kind of all over the world. Um, just I've gained this following for, for working for from years. Modeling. Yeah, from modeling and from acting. Is it more men or women? Um, you know, it's a little bit more men, I have okay. to say. Um, and that's changing. That's changing actually rapidly. How? Um, with me, one, posting my boyfriend. Two, talking about body image. Talking about posting cooking videos. Talking about things that matter to women mm -hmm. more than when I first started modeling. I was you know, this um, sex sim symbol, honestly, I did Playboy, I did all these things that were so, you know, sexy. And I thought that was my value at the time. And I gained a lot of men following from that. And that's, that's okay. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm trying to shift because I have so much more to offer than just the way I look in my body. Yeah. And I want to offer that to women who are you know, who are me back in the day or who are thinking about, hey, I want to know how to love myself and and be confident in my own skin. So I'm hoping to shift that even more. And so what do you say to, you know, girls who may be hearing the same thing? Because these agents still exist and they're yeah. still probably working under those same, you know, prototypes, even though there are so many women who are breaking those molds, right? Like Ashley Graham's and such. Um, what do you say to them? Um, I, you know what I think? I think first of all, if you're thinking about getting mm -hmm. in the industry, um, maybe you should think again <laughs> because, <laughs> because this, in this industry, it's really hard. It really messes with your mind and, um, body image. So I ha luckily come from a really loving and supportive family. And so I have the luxury to, be able to have that support when I've been rejected multiple times in a day over and over castings. There's so much rejection you have to have 
tough skin to be in this game. Mm -hmm. And I'm working all the time on my mental because I... I look in the mirror and it's hard for me to love myself. And that's something that I'm learning because we not only are criticized by the way we look, you know, we are judged just on that. You don't book Mm -hmm. that job because you weren't skinny enough, tall enough, you know, you didn't fit what they were looking for. And so that really can mess with your head Mm -hmm. over years of just that and um, extreme dieting and all this stuff that's really not healthy. And then also ageism. So for years, my agents would tell me, hey, you need to lie about your age. At 24 is when I started lying about my age because my agents were like, you need to lie. When you go to the casting, lie. I don't care what age you say, but say you're way younger because you look it so you look it and you sound it (laughs) you sound really young right so when i i thought she was like 23 or something like i would never ever know yeah your your true age yeah so i'm 35 and um you say that proudly i love it (laughs) i know i'm excited that i'm 35 like i feel better than i ever have i'm happier than i ever have and i've i've feel like I've lived life long enough to know what's what makes me happy now and that's so beautiful in my 20s I was a complete mess just living my life for other people so now I'm like you know what it's my time and I I feel like the 30s are the best years so far and I'm excited about my 40s how does that shift though how do you shift from being a mess in your 20s to to you know, finding what you love? Like, how did you do that? Well, um, I think it was, I was forced into it. Okay. Which means I I basically was unhappy. And I was like, I can't live life like this anymore. I need to figure out why I'm unhappy, what's going on. Um, I need to make change. There's something else out there. I'm, I'm feeling so unfulfilled in this, this life of just doing the same thing. And not really there's no depth to what i was doing for years Mm -hmm. and yeah sometimes it was fun but i was in a constant state of fight or flight stress all the time um my hormones were off and they have been for years um i struggle with a lot of health issues which i think were to do with the implants no way and yeah so i'm i'm excited to get my health back and so part of this whole journey was i think it started during covid when there was no work anymore Mm -hmm. and i all of a sudden had to i was forced to focus on my health and my mental health being number one i wasn't working and i was so depressed because that was my life Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh no it's over for me this is all i had and so i was forced into basically falling in love with myself, learning about myself and finding other things that I could offer to the world and to, you know, bring value to people other than just the way I look. And so it took um, seeing a therapist, journaling, meditating. It took microdosing mushrooms, um, just doing things that really were all about my mental health and my physical health. And when I made that shift a few years ago, it's been a work in progress, but so many things have changed. And one of the things too is just learning my intuition and my my inner voice and listening to it for the first time ever and not and not letting outside voices be louder. And so with that, I kind of I figured out, hey, you know what? I don't want this plastic in my body anymore. It's making me sick. And that's from listening to my intuition. And I I was like, I need to get them out. Well said. How did you, um, how did you learn to listen to your intuition? Well, um, I think working with a therapist and what she would tell me is just do it, listen, you know, be quiet close your eyes, meditate. You have a question. What do you feel is the right answer to that? 
And um, you have to be in a calm state and you have to be, you have to go within yourself. And it's a, it's a tool that you have to practice daily. It's not something that you all of a sudden are so good at overnight. Like at first you're going to be questioning yourself, feeling, uh, you know, is this the right answer? Is it not? Yeah. Like, Am I making this up? Yeah. Like, like sometimes is it I'll... in my head? Yeah. I and do so that too. I, I still do that, but it's just trusting yourself. And then, okay, for instance, this surgery, I was so scared to do this surgery. What I was, was most scary for you? Oh, I mean, my career, first of all. Like, what, how would that change things for me? Being like, First of all, I've never opened up about having implants. So like coming and saying, hey, you guys, I'm not real. There's part of me that's fake. Um, also, I'm going to change the way I look and you guys might not like it. I might not work anymore. So the fear of my career ending or just getting bad publicity, being in the public eye is just the stresses that come with that. But also the fear of surgery you're going under. And I haven't done that since 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't even remember what it was like. I was just so scared of maybe not waking up and how it would look after. That was the biggest fear. Like, will I look bad? Yeah. Um, I, I grew up with very small boobs. And so I was like, oh no, I'm gonna go back to being super flat chested and no one's going to like me. So that was huge fear. So I kept going back and forth in my head and I had a bunch of mental breakdowns right before. The week before was the worst. The day before was bad. But um, at the end of the day, I, I did it. And because I did it, after I, when I woke up, I had such a sense of relief and joy and happiness and I did the scariest thing that I have ever done and no one told me to do it. All these years, my agents would be like telling me different things that I should do. This is the first time I made a decision for myself. I came up to the conclusion by myself and I followed through even though it was so scary. And then- What did your agents say to you about taking him out? Did you tell them? Yeah, I told them. Um, and everybody surprisingly in my work group and circle was, were very supportive. Oh. But as far as like friends, doctors and people like that, I got a lot of people saying it's all in your head. This isn't a real thing. You know, um, they look great. I, we don't recommend you do that. Maybe wait till you're older. Um, you know, I did get a lot of that too, wow. but I, I went ahead and I did it anyways. And that feeling that I did something that scared me is the best feeling you ever could have. Because after that, I'm like, what else? What else scares me? I'm going to do it. See? I have the courage. I have the I strength. Love that. Yeah. I always say, I love challenging myself and doing things that scare me because the feeling when you're doing it of like, holy shit, holy shit, is it going to be okay? Uh you get to the other side. But I think now, recognizing that. Yeah, it's you, really. You recognized that it was scary and then you recognized you got through it and then you apply that information to the future saying, why am I afraid of these other things? I said, Maria, <laughs> how many tumors, how many can't? Yeah. But you don't do that, Maria, I don't think. So I think it's, a, it's good to listen to Joy because you've been through so many fearful, life-threatening things and yeah. Did she give you the confidence? Like, I love that. Yeah. And part of the prep that I did when I kept going back in my head, like, should I not do this? Should I do this? Was let me look back of all the times in my life I thought that about something. One, moving to Miami, dropping out of college to be a model. I It was so scary at the time. And you know what? I did it. I listened to my gut at that time. And I followed my dreams. And moving to LA, you know, there's leaving a toxic ex-boyfriend. All these times where I did things that were scary. And then I'm like, you know what? I can do this. This is like just the same. Just doing it and adding another one of these fearless mm. things to my, my book. That's so great. <laughs> I always say, find that moment where you did something and, and you you step back into those shoes and you remind yourself that you have that power. So I had a moment on Dancing with the Stars when 
you know, like I started, I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. I never took dance classes as a kid or anything like that. So Kevin, my dad, my mom, everybody was looking at me like, you're going to (laughs) suck. And there was one moment in the show, maybe like halfway through, where I looked at Kevin and from the balcony, I'm like, I got this. I just felt so good. And then I nailed it and I got perfect tens. So anytime I need to help myself rise to an occasion, I will channel that memory back and and I'll, I'll be like, no, I can do this. I got this. And so you're doing the same thing. And I think it's a really cool thing for people to hear um, that you can go back into your history and and pull something out and and help give yourself the courage to do that next thing. Exactly. And now I have this under my belt. So yeah. I'm I'm ready for the next thing. So how did you feel you looked afterwards? So um immediately afterwards when they took off the tape a couple days after, I started crying instantly mm-hmm. because one I was really happy, but two I was shocked at how bad it looked because there was extra skin. It was all squished by the bandages you know it didn't it looked it was all cut up um it sounds awful but it does sound pretty bad but <laughs> but i'm, I'm four, grateful for the honesty <laughs> yeah four four weeks later today is marks the four weeks man they look good okay. i am so surprised i'm like i've never felt like i look better they're small, but they are perky. They're this. The only thing that now that is still healing is the scars. Oh, and I have something for you for that. That's good. Yeah, Briotech. Okay, mm-hmm. I need to start using mm-hmm. that because that's pretty much all that is um, red light. visible. Red light. Okay, mm-hmm. I've been trying, or I've been doing hyperbaric chambers. Actually, that's been I yeah, feel I'm like sure helping a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so I that's they look great, honestly. I'm so surprised and I'm I'm excited. Like I'll go out at night and I'll wear a sheer top because before I couldn't, it would be way too skanky looking. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like wearing all the tops I couldn't wear that are chic and you know, um it, it's exciting. I, I'm yeah. showing them off. I love it. I'm excited. Um when you said earlier you said that you um you did this for health reasons. What are the health reasons that made you say, I have to get these out? Yeah, so I, in the last few years, I've been really focusing on my health and I've been doing everything right. You know, I I have focused on my sleep hygiene, been working out every day, um, eating extremely clean, healthy, taking all the supplements I need, and my health has not been getting better. And so I really was concerned. I'm like, what's going on there has to be something else um i would get migraines for three days straight multiple times a month um just if i didn't get nine hours of sleep i would just be so groggy and just the fatigue was bad the inflammation was bad my cravings for food and just everything was out of control my thyroid hormone is off it's been off for years and I went to the doctors. They wanted to put me on more thyroid medication. I'm like, but why? I'm doing everything right. So I was like, there has to be something else. And it just kept going back to this thought inside me. It's it's these implants. Your gut was talking. Yeah. And I, I just had this feeling. And then I started to realize how dis how much discomfort I had when I laid on my side, when a pillow was brushing against my um, breasts, all these things that I ignored for years for Mm -hmm. just saying, you know what, it's the way I look. I'm going to just, it's, it's the having implants, the problem that you're going to have to have. You can't wear the bras you want to wear, but I'm like, wait a second. Why am I living life like this? I can live life feeling good. Why would I compromise that for my looks? Wow. So all of those health issues, do you still have them? So I Are things getting better. I think I really feel a lot better. Um, I haven't tested my thyroid hormone yet because I'm going to wait a couple more weeks. Yeah, it's still early. You're going to be so inflamed after surgery still. And I've still been recovering this whole time. So the whole recovery process, I think a lot of the toxins are just kind of 
throughout my body. So I'm just going through a recovery process right now. So I'm not fully like feeling amazing, but I feel so much better. I feel mentally better. I feel like I have a lot more energy. I can wake up earlier and feel excited about the day. And I get up and I'm like, okay, what what can I do today? And I'm just starting today, I'm able to start working out again, but I've been so excited to work out. Like I have all this energy. I'm like, I need to work out. Wow. So yeah, I think, I think I'm going to test my thyroid and I think it's going to be better um, because I feel so much energy and I, I really hope that I don't get that migraine again. I haven't yet. So mm-hmm. we'll see how it goes. What kind of implants did you have? I had, um, saline implant saline i don't know what the different ones are but i know yeah saline so it's the gel kind okay um and i had 300 cc's which weighs both of them together weigh a pound and a half so that extra weight and i'm a small person Mm -hmm. was weighing me down and i think that's why i was getting so many tension headaches and migraines and the doctor said when he went in to remove the implants that um which is really common with someone who is having bad symptoms is there's a capsule of scar tissue that was surrounding the implant that was squeezing the implant so tight. And he said he's seen a lot of patients who have had this problem. I think it's called capsule contraction that their symptoms usually go away instantly after surgery. Yeah. So I'm so excited about that. So was the doctor happy you did this after? Yeah, the doctor, um, I went and saw Dr. Rankin in Jupiter, Florida, and he only does explants. He's mm. he's amazing because he he listens to what problems you have and he says, you know, I I can't say 100% your your problems are going to get better, but what I've seen is that like I don't know, 80, 90% of the people who come to me have no more symptoms after or way less symptoms yeah so and then also what he does which a lot of doctors don't do is he removes that capsule that scar tissue that surrounds the implant which also can cause cancer down the road um, because it's just scar tissue sitting in your body and needs to be removed as well so he went and cut that out too and then he also puts external bags um drains that were for the first five to seven days. So you drain all those toxins out of your body um, because otherwise they go back into your body right after surgery. Yeah. So I'm excited and so grateful that I found him. The stars aligned with finding him, honestly, because it just worked out. The date worked out um, that the surgery happened. And I mean, everything kind of just lined up i was like i can't not do it now wow now what are the stats and and the current research saying on on breast implants that you found so yeah there's a lot of health um, a lot of health issues that happen from uh, getting from having breast implants i want to just pull them up so i can get them get it all up so yes it is called capsule uh, contraction you can have leaks and ruptures and you can also get calcium deposits which um, create uh, hard lumps around your implants and they um, and they can also cause cancer and heart disease. Um, you can get autoimmune uh, responses from it and develop auto- some kind of autoimmune disease from having the implants when you get some of these other side effects, your body starts to react to get you get um, to. De- sorry, uh, tissue death around the implant as well, which can become very unhealthy and, and lead to because it's a, lead to cancer. It's a foreign object going yeah. into your body. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I think you know this. I have a pacemaker. It's a foreign object in your body. And uh, many years ago, I had an infection on it. And the, the doctors were like, we're taking it out yesterday. Because if that, if the infection is in your body, just it's inevitable that it's going to land up going towards to your heart or to somewhere else. And you can, you don't even realize it. And you can land up with like septicemia inside. So what did they take out? 
though I had a pacemaker. They had to put it back in. But they had oh, to that's take what I was out. confused. I'm like, wait, you have it, but they took it out? Yeah, so they had to take it out urgently. And then, like, long process, but they eventually put it back in. Wow. Because of because of the the scar tissue, that was the yeah. the main thing that caused the um, the ability for the infection to to form is because of the scar tissue. Yeah, that's why so like getting... hernia repairs are really difficult too, and I feel like all those meshes get recalled. It's probably similar. Yeah. That's why I am trying to heal mine with castor oil, <laughs> and I am going to really research the shoulder dice treatment because shoulder dice. Um, what I've learned is they they use they they stitch your muscles back. Oh and wow! And so instead of doing mesh, it's it's done with the muscle. So um, I wanted that for my dad when he had surgery last year, but he didn't have the patience to listen to me. So he just went to Connecticut and did it with the mesh. And I was like, I can only control so much. <laughs> but um, if I end up having to do it, I think that's what I would do. Yeah. Anytime you have a foreign object in your body, your body's gonna there's a good chance it's going to reject it because that's yeah. how our bodies are made. They're to fight this. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're made to protect us from foreign objects. So, I mean, luckily, um, a lot, you know, a lot of people too, they don't see symptoms right away. And I, that was me. Some people see symptoms immediately and they have to get them removed because it's really serious. But then some over years, will get worse and worse because your body is like, okay, I've had enough. And so I think that was the case for me. Mm -hmm. It I've had mine or had mine for 12 years. So it was like, you know what? No longer get, get this out of your body. Yeah. I've had wrestlers on the show that have talked about there's rupturing and having to get them redone. And I'm like blown away that they can even have them as wrestlers. They're right? doing all these acrobatic, you know, things and, and suplexing and whatever and <laughs> and it's all on their chest they're landing I don't know how they all just don't burst every time right um but yeah I've been really fascinated with the whole breast implant thing in terms of of the health part of it because there's so many things that we normalize in our culture and we're like, oh, but everybody's doing it. Everyone's drinking toxic coffee. Okay, cool. And everybody everybody walks into <laughs> this huge brand of coffee i won't say it just to be safe and it says <laughs> our products blah 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 could have cancerous agents in it or could lead to cancer and we all just like assholes go in and order shit in there i don't understand yeah. why none of us are really awake and by the way i i add myself in because i would see that sign and i was the sheep that went in too and now I'm just yeah, you're like, like everyone else is doing it, so it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. We're all gonna die together. Yeah, right. It tastes really good. It <laughs> tastes really good. I don't know. No, I always I tasted it. like seal piss to me. Oh, yeah, I hate that coffee. Always have. You know what has been a life hack for me what? is switching out my coffee to bone broth. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah, honestly, it's helped with my microbiome and um, with that jolt in the morning. It's more of a smooth long-lasting energy it really has helped with like heartburn and all this stuff that i was experiencing hmm. one of my best things that i've done okay. recently i really love bone broth the problem for me is my <laughs> blood sugar spikes oh from bone broth from freaking bone broth really it's the fat in it or something no way so i shied away from it and um I've gotten back into some organic coffee. I don't need it. Yeah. I just love it. For so, years, I, I felt like I needed it, but apparently yeah. I don't. <laughs> when you don't, when you get off coffee, you have the most energy in the world. Yeah. Well, not the first week. Not, but... not immediately, but after. Yeah. After that, mm -hmm. now I'm like, wow, this is crazy. The feeling I can have with no coffee. Mm -hmm. Um. I think your next journey in your healing is you got to listen to this show every day, by the way. Okay, for sure. I will um, now. Because as you're healing from the breast implants being out, you need to add potentially some other modalities to help, right? So like you need sunlight. Do yeah. you get sunlight? Yes, I do. <laughs> I remember when we were outside, you were like, I love the sun. This feels so good. Yeah. So I try to get sunlight in the morning, actually. That's the best As time. soon as I wake up. I, yes, queen. I have like this morning ritual routine where 
I love to journal with my bone broth and I add collagen and I add mushrooms and it tastes kind of awful, but I love it. It's good for you. Yeah, because I'm like, this is great. The first thing I – and then I'll journal and I'll sit out in the sun for 15, 20 minutes and um, it just really kickstarts my day. Mm-hmm. It's the best feeling ever. And if I don't get that, I'm kind of like miserable. <laughs> yeah, no, it's – it's the the sunlight is so helpful for yeah. our health. I've had Athena on the sun every day since she was born in the sun. My dad was freaking out in the beginning. Mari, I leave the baby out of the sun. My dad, the sun is medicine. Yeah. You're good. It it bring it gives you life, yeah. literally. Plants cannot live without it. So yeah. why do we think we can? No, <laughs> this is a good point. I feel when it hits my face, I just feel so alive. I, yeah. I feel so much better. So I um I wonder like now in the modeling world for like young girls who want to get in this. I know you said don't, but they're still going to want to. Yeah, no, I say that as a joke because here's the thing. A lot of parents, they come to me and they say, oh, my daughter wants wants to be a model. Do you have any advice for her? First of all, I ask them, is it you want that want them to be a model or do they want to be a model? Because that's a huge difference. You can want your daughter to be a model, but unless they really want to do it, there's probably a small chance that they will be successful because in order to be successful in this industry you have to want it so bad it has to be all you want and um without that as soon as you hit something tough you're gonna give up so the reason why i'm here today is because i was determined i did not give up and there's so many times still to this day where I wanted to give up and I didn't. So if the if your daughter wants to be a model and they really want it, then it's possible for anyone. It doesn't matter what you look like mm-hmm. because I I feel like I could look quite average, you know, but the thing is I did not give up and it's all about nowadays how you market yourself, um having something else than just looking beautiful. Um, having a voice, other passions, social media is a huge part nowadays. There's all these things that kind of play into being successful and um, just kind of not giving up would be my number one thing of advice. Yeah. And I think you don't have to conform to anything anymore. That's the cool thing. Like, yeah, you have to just own whatever it is you have, even if it's like a big crooked nose. Yeah. Like that's cool now. Anything right. different is cool. Yeah. Back when I started modeling, it wasn't the case. And I ha- I feel like nowadays, um, you if you really want something, you can market yourself and say, hey, this is in. I can sell things with the way I look. And that is enough. It, it's not, they're not going to be measuring you like back in the day. Mm-hmm. Now they want different they want body they're more about body positivity which i'm loving this shift and i still think that it could go even more because right now i feel like they have plus size models and then they have regular size models but where's the in between mm-hmm. right cuz there's the the average person isn't going to be either they're yeah. going to be in the middle yeah, so the average person is a size 10 let's say yeah maybe i don't know anymore i'm just guessing so where where are those models for 12 and so i think i think there needs to be more models like that yeah and um for me personally i stopped weighing myself because it was really messing with my head and instead i eat healthy and i work out and i feel good and that should be enough it shouldn't be a number on a scale and that was a really hard thing for me too because I always had this idea in my head if I'm not this weight I'm not happy and I won't be happy until I'm that way and that's so unhealthy because when is that going to end you know it it doesn't I have so many friends oh my god and they're usually petite little things and they're like, I'm so fat. I'm so fat. Oh my God, I gained it. And every conversation I've had with them is about their weight. And I'm like, guys, you're wasting so much of your life right. stressing about something that no one else is seeing yeah. but you. And and it's not 
healthy. Like I, I feel like I'm grateful that I've had a pretty healthy take on things where I'm like, okay, if I'm going to eat more, I'm going to weigh more and I'm going to be more and that's okay. <laughs> so yeah. then I'll have a period where things just shift back out the other way and I just fluctuate you know, a little bit here and there, but I'm not going to be constantly weighing myself and holding myself to some standard, you know? And that's why I think it was great when I shifted out of like, okay, I'm going to model to I'm going to be on TV because it's like (laughs) very different standards, obviously. (laughs) And I remember it happened when I did the Miss Teen USA pageant. So I won Miss Massachusetts. I was heading to Miss Teen USA and I'm like, they're going to love me for me. (laughs) (laughs) And that was a big (laughs) <laughs> funny joke because I remember they had these comfort suites and so every floor that the you know the pageant girls lived on had this comfort suite you could go to and get snacks and stuff and of course it was all candy and you know junk food and so I would go and I was like corrupting all the girls I'm like come on let's go who cares we're gonna be fine and my swimsuit competition numbers were oh terrible. my gosh <laughs> um and everybody else was like well most of them were like really on point and stuff. And I was like, oh, I guess, well, that's part of the grading system I should have considered. But it wasn't important to me to be yeah. the skinniest and, and you know. Well, and I think, I think that's so cute and funny. And like, <laughs> honestly, it, it makes you who you are, right? And you are gorgeous. So you don't have to worry about that. But I feel like neither did they, right? Because how did that enrich their life? What, they won first place at a pageant? Like, does that really bring happiness? And I think when you can love yourself and be comfortable in yourself and go have fun and eat, you know, go into that room and enjoy yourself, that's living life. And that's that's where you're really like truly happy within. And you probably had a blast. I did have a blast. And they probably were miserable. I did have a blast. I was like, (laughs) oh, this is so fun. But... I, you know, I think it's hard when you're pursuing your dream right. and you know what it's going to take. And I just had a different view of what was going to happen. Yeah. And, you know, obviously I didn't win. I think I tied for 12th place or something um, or 13th place. So I didn't make the semifinals. But, um, but you know, everyone's pursuing their dream. And so I get it. Um but I, and, and it's just, it's so great that things have changed. Like things yeah. are shifting and getting better that too. so that we don't have to hold people to unrealistic expectations. Yeah. And then filters is a huge thing too. Mm-hmm. I stopped using that because, um, I would look at myself with a filter and be like, Oh, I look great, mm-hmm. you know, and then turn the filter off. Whoa. Is that what I really look like? And so just yeah. getting used to seeing yourself, how you are is like, it was a huge shift for me and I was like I can't use these anymore what if I meet people in real life and they're like wow you don't look like your filter yeah that (laughs) happens all the time well we see like we're actually at the beach house the other day we were looking at our favorite 90 day fiance stars do you watch 90 day fiance no oh my god it's the best (laughs) show ever um we watched last night and our jaw literally you had to pick up my jaw Matt, I was freaking out. Kevin's like, this is the best show ever. We cannot believe these couples. You should watch. You okay. Have, you have a boyfriend, right? Yep. Okay. Couples viewing. It's okay. everything. <laughs> um, and so, but I was like, Kevin, all these people, they get on TV. They look normal and beautiful. And then all of a sudden it's everything in their face has to morph. And now they look like caricatures of themselves and i'm like i don't understand is it when you get on tv you think you have to look a certain way and so now you're in that rat race in a sense you know where you have to do all these things well i think for me um i will probably for them too all of a sudden they're getting all this these comments they're probably reading the comments you know oh um whatever it might be that that is their insecurity other people will Amplify. mention yeah amplify talk about oh this person's eyes are too close together they're too small or oh this person looks like um this or that and so i think that really gets in their head and they or they are they're watching themselves and they're criticizing their themselves because they've never seen themselves in that light ah they've never seen themselves on tv and yeah stuff. You're right. and you know the camera adds 10 pounds you don't look exactly 
like you do on camera. So they're probably tweaking themselves or the makeup artist is saying, you know, let me let me conceal your nose a little bit. And I never knew they had a problem with their nose in the first place, you know? I remember when my makeup artist, <laughs> most our, my most recent one, started contouring my face and contouring my nose. He's like, let's make your nose smaller. I go, I didn't know I had a big nose. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about? And yeah, you're right, actually. And you literally have the cutest nose. Thanks. Like, <laughs> so yeah, that's crazy. And I, okay, some of the things that I heard over the years about myself, my first agency was like, your, your chin and your jaw are your flaw. You need to hide it. You need to contour oh, it. Never shoot with your face up. Like, this is what my first agent told me. So for the longest time, I had this huge insecurity about yeah. the way that my face shape was. Something that I couldn't change. You can't really change your jaw. I'm sure you could, but... Well, I now was, you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would be... Every photo shoot, I would have to tell the makeup artist, hey, can you contour my jaw and my chin and make it smaller? Because it's, it's my flaw, right? And... Did they see what you were talking about? They when you did. Said a it? lot of times they didn't. <laughs> they were like, wait, what? This is why you were booked, though. Yeah. You, you don't look like every other person. This is your strength. And so over the years, I started to realize wait, actually, this is my quality. This is my strength. This mm -hmm. is why I look different, not like the, you know, so and so or this. And so I just started to embrace it. Yeah. And. And now, um, and there is other things too. Um, I, I feel like just the height thing, that was a huge insecurity to me. Like I had to be put on boxes, like to shoot with other models when I was on set that were six inches taller than me, which is very common. And so they would crop it. So you couldn't see the box obviously, but we'd be the same height. Wow. Yeah. So things like that, they, it really starts to mess with I you. Know. I know it's a really tough, you know, acting is so hard because you're rejected all the time as well. And you're not good enough, but in modeling, you know, you're not pretty enough. You're not skinny enough. Like your physicality is constantly rocking your world which is why I was like, I'm out of this. Like, I can't do this. This is not good. Yeah. It's so hard. hard. Um, and I had booty and I had thighs and I was, you know, I had the Greek, <laughs> the Greek stuff. Um, and which is beautiful. And I think that's what now the industry is shifting towards. They want to yeah. see real people. Well, the people I loved as models growing up, like I loved Cindy Crawford and Stephanie Seymour. They both yeah. had bodies. Yeah, they are. They are so stunning. Right. And like who are your icons? And I, I think, unfortunately, I was idolizing Kate Moss. I knew you were going to say Kate. <laughs> but you know what? You have that vibe. Well, also, too, she's a shorter model and we're yeah. the same height. Yeah. So I'm like, well, if she can make it, I can. I, used to I just say need the to same lose thing. 10 pounds. <laughs> I used to say the same thing. But by the way, that's why I was surprised that you went the breast implant route because yeah. Kate never did. Well, I think because I started modeling in Miami. Oh yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's what, swimsuit. World, yeah. So. It was, it was just all it's about different swimsuit. Than high fashion. Yep. And my agents would tell me, you can't do high fashion. You're too short. So might as well get some boobs and do swimsuits. Yeah. And so I did swimsuits really well for years. But see, like when you think of models, like, and going back to having different features, you go back to Stephanie Seymour. She had a different kind of nose, right? She had this like little thing at the tip mm -hmm. or Christy Turlington had a different nose. She had different eyes. Um, Linda Evangelista had a very different look. They yeah. weren't like classic beauty. Like St Cindy Crawford was more like classic beauty, right. I feel like. Or um, Helena Christensen was very different and I don't know. Like I, I think that we, we all have this vision in our mind of what beautiful is, and what we don't realize is beauty is so different. Right. It's in, the uniqueness that really makes something beautiful. It's yeah. the, um, it's the little things that are different that make you look different, not like everyone else, and make you stand out. Yeah. So I think realizing that and embracing that for so many years, I tried to look like everyone else mm -hmm. and so 
I think which is the problem right now yeah everybody wants to look like the Kardashians <laughs> again I say it I love them they're my friends but we all don't need to have the exact same you know fillers and features and the whole thing like yeah. we just don't need to all look the same because I when I and I'm so grateful for like the Reese Witherspoons and the Jennifer Aniston's right. and the Laura Derns and all these women who are looking like themselves because it's so rare it's so rare to look at someone and say oh you're you yes everyone can tweak and like you know you can botox and k- try to keep the aging from happening yeah okay I get all of it um I'm on board I do it too but I remember my mom when she had cancer she finally had the courage to tell me that she was insecure about her upper lip being so thin and I was like mom let's just go take care of it screw it and you know I had never done anything like that but I was like if I had that issue I would probably do it too yeah and so I took her we just felt like a little drip <laughs> just a teeny drip in there and she felt so good um yeah and I I also am all for like do what makes you feel the best yeah and I think you know it's not gonna be the end of the world to have a little Botox or a little filler but I think when you're thinking about doing that, it's really important to also maybe stop, wait, and maybe make sure you're doing the internal work first because it will never end. The thing is, it will never end. Thank you. Because what's going to happen is you think that when you do that, you're going to feel better. Yeah. But you're not because it's the you get feeling inside that's to, wrong that yep. needs help. You get addicted to the temporary feeling good that goes away because that only can last so long and then Mm -hmm. you're not going to like something else about you and the thing is the unfortunate thing is we are all aging we are all changing every day that unfortunate it's it's actually not it's a good thing beautiful thing so um embracing that and being happy with where we are at right now because I mean, this is kind of what I was thinking. We're all going to be 90 one day. Mm-hmm. We're all going to be covered in wrinkles and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So at what mm-hmm. point do we accept it? You know, so great. <laughs> at what point do we say, I'm happy where I'm at? Yeah. And so I'm like, I, I've never realized that until now. So that's what I'm working on. And I'm like, I'm happy where I'm at for the first time in 35 years and I wish I realized this earlier because I can now feel good about the few wrinkles that I'm getting Mm -hmm. I can feel good about this aging process that's a beautiful thing yeah I love that I think it's so important for all of us to have these conversations to help each other be okay with it too and Um, make it normalize it right normalize aging I know I know it's hard it's it's (laughs) scary but you know, like I I was thinking the other day, I'm like, okay, when Athena is 20, I'm going to be 65 taking a picture next to her. Like, <laughs> like, like I always think about like the cool moms now when their daughters are like, and they can like still kind of look like they can, you know, look okay. I'm going to be a hag. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm playing. I think but, there's the technology. It's just going to keep getting better and better. <laughs> but it's just funny because it, it is going to happen. Yeah. And I think about my friends who, and even myself, when I used to be maybe had, had some concerns about like my body or whatever, let's say I was like, oh, I was, you know, 40 pounds heavier when I was in college. And I, I know all of us look back and we realize it wasn't so bad or um, a lot of people are so unhappy with their bodies as they're going through their lives. And then they look back 10 years and they're like, what was I thinking? I looked amazing back then. And I know I've had that conversation with a lot of friends. So it's the same thing in 10 years, we're going to look back and be like, we looked so good. Why were we worried about wrinkles back then? Yeah. We're the youngest we will ever be right now, (laughs) which is kind of amazing. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Right? It's a great quote. I like that. <laughs> Honey, are you going to embrace your age? Of course, always. Well, I guys know. have it so much easier because you guys look so handsome no matter what. Well, thank you for saying that, but I don't know if that's true. I well, you are handsome, honey. I embrace having wisdom and uh, less hang ups. Just there's so many good things that come with age. Yeah, and I think too, that's part of the how I've been able to 
really fall in love with myself is finding other things that I love about myself and take the focus off the way I look and really put the focus and the energy on things and passions that I have that I find are my qualities, which is one of them is painting, for example. I love painting and um, I've been an artist since I was like four. So oh. I just putting my energy into creating something beautiful. It takes that pressure off of myself and it puts the energy on some other quality that I have to offer to the world, to myself, you know, whether it's cooking that amazing meal or so things that don't have to do with your physical appearance is a good way to just get your mind off of it and um, embrace other great things you have to offer the world. I love that. <laughs> I love cooking. It's so much fun. <laughs> it is. And then you get to eat it after. I the know. best part. <laughs> oh my God. I made this um, this dessert thing on TikTok. It wasn't great for my blood sugar, unfortunately, because <laughs> I thought I used dark chocolate, but it wasn't. It was unsweetened cacao, but I feel like I needed probably dark to be even safer. But it was like dates at the bottom, like mush dates with Ooh, almond butter yum. on top chopped nuts and the unsweetened chocolate on top and the sea salt <gasps> oh man that sounds amazing so yummy it was crazy but I love trying new things like that um but I I think it's so great that you have become aware that you need to shift your mindset and kind of even shift your career because you know things do change and, and there are ebbs and flows in careers. Um, you know, we're seeing 90 year old models now. I mean, Elon Musk's mom is like crushing it as a model, right? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy. We, I can be a model until I'm 90. Yeah. So which was not the case before. That is true. It so is changing. You really can. And <laughs> the only way you're going to get to do that is if you allow some aging too, right? Yeah. Because at some point, like, it's like, you can tell when it's <laughs> yeah, someone's much. like 50 and they're, you know, wait, what are they? It's like that weird thing. They've done too many things. And yeah, I think right now it's all about being natural and, um, and that's another reason why I got my implants out is mm -hmm. I do think that we are embracing, we want to see people who are looking more natural when we're buying clothes, when we're, when we're purchasing things, because we're like, okay, we can relate to this person. And I don't think it's always been like that, um, which I really love this shift. What did your boyfriend think, by the oh, way, yeah. after? Um, so my, my boyfriend, he was one of the, people who actually suggested, hey, what if it is your breast implants? Um, he had a friend that recently went through an explant. He has been supportive through the whole process, and I mm -hmm. don't know if I would necessarily have done it if it weren't for having oh. him. He um, He's like, but if you lose your booty, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep eating the baklava and the feta cheese. That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> I mean, we're not the baklava anymore, but... But yeah, um, it's it's really great. important to have a supportive partner. Yeah. Uh, it's a life-changing thing. <laughs> yeah. Kevin has been with me through a lot of journeys. I was 40 pounds heavier when I'm... Did I meet you fully 40 pounds heavier? Yeah, no, I was. I was at full, mm -hmm. full height uh, of my weight, my college days. And then <laughs> didn't even realize when I had lost 20 pounds. Back in the day. Back in the day. We've been together too long. <laughs> um not too long you know what i mean i love you honey thank you wow you guys are so cute i love it <laughs> <laughs> couple uh, goals wait 19 i was 18 i'm 45 has it been tw we're going on 27 years it's a great scam 20 yeah 26 ish yeah long wow time. you guys met when you were two i was two yeah <laughs> <laughs> um all right friends i hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh as much as we did um in the meantime be nice people make good choices and be present this podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. 
Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.